Alright. Let's take a look. If you had that wall clear there, that probably would have been good clear for your teammate. Because he... Was he ready for that? I don't... It doesn't look like he would have been ready, but... He may have been able. Looks like he was ready to turn on that one. That's just an unlucky whiff on the, the wall there. I like that you shadow did the shadow defense there. It definitely isn't smart to go for that, especially your with your teammate up as well. Just staying back and waiting for you know your teammate to eventually get that demo was definitely the smart play. What the heck? Oof. Yeah, that's looks like it was just bad timing with catching the the ball. I see where you're wanting to do there, but it looks like you just mistimed it. Just a little far away from the ball. see this from farther perspective so you missed the catch and do a pass back that was good the pass back was definitely a good idea but at the same time your teammate was kind of far back and you also didn't get a whole lot of power on the the pass back as well luckily he was ready to, for it though yeah he started moving up to get there in time but uh we can swap back to you. So after this you can see your your teammate runs into that corner. He's using a lot of boost right there, so he's definitely gonna be low. So you can sort of expect him to be back in that corner, which I believe he's actually yeah, he's in that corner grabbing that boost after demoing, because I think he used all of it. Let me see, I'm pretty sure he used all of it to get that demo. Oh yeah, he definitely used it all. So he's in that corner, and then you kind of pop the ball up. Pass back, which actually it ended it actually ended up being pretty good. And shadowing again. It was an alright touch off the the wall there, although it did go right to Ben. Which uh Let me see that from his perspective. If Ben was a bit farther back he probably could have scored off that. But fortunately, he was pushed up just a little too close and kind of had to turn to the side a little bit. Ooh. 
Yeah, that's... That's pretty unlucky to have happen. Yeah, you should have double jumped aerial from the start instead of single jumping using his boost and then doing that. I don't know if he tried to flip there. I'm, I'm going to assume that he wanted to flip into that but didn't get it off. But either way... Ah. I don't know. That's just, that's pretty. That's he should have hit that for sure. You're in a a good spot, and a little bit of a weak touch. But I can't really blame you for that because if I were you, I would not have expected him to miss it. But you almost scored off that. It's a good half flip. Um. I probably would have waited for your teammate to go. You were moving faster, but at the same time, he if he turned the other way, this would have been good. But he turned towards the ball as well. And you'll you'll sometimes uh, you'll sometimes get this in a match, especially since yeah, it looks like you're solo queuing. People tend to to favor the ball more than I guess playing rotation I guess that's I don't know a better way to word it but I hope you understand what I mean by that people tend to prefer the ball especially in twos people love to just go for the ball so right here the second you see him kind of turn towards the ball Yeah, you did. You were definitely outpacing him, which is why I think it ended up being okay. But at the same time, it is a double commit, and it could have been prevented if you didn't go for the ball. You could have probably have gone more out towards the right, like once you see him going for it. You probably could have been out more towards the right to be there for a possible pass or something. It's a good block. I would have turned around a bit sooner there. Like once I saw that your teammate got that kind of hit, and you can see that V Rushali, I'm gonna assuming that's his name, Rush, and you see that he's kind of farther back than that. I probably would have turned around, around like the midfield. I probably would have turned around here, maybe, maybe just a tad bit later. So you don't really see him until there. Might have been able to score that. You jumped a little late on it and then you looks like you flipped a right. I think if you flipped forward into that. Uh, I don't know, that's kind of hard to tell. As you flip right, which, yeah, it sends it towards the net, but it doesn't have a whole lot of power. I think if you're a bit more straight, like instead of being right here, if you were like here, or maybe a little bit more over here, and then, you know, drive forward to hit the ball that way, I think you'd have had a stronger touch on target and possibly even a goal. But you still hit it towards the net, which is good.
So he blocks it. And here you kind of see uh, Pezman coming in. It's, again, it's kind of, it's a little bit tough because I you know most of the time you're focused on the ball and watching it bounce out. Let me see this from Pez's view. Yeah, so to him it looks like you're rotating out. Like he would, he's probably assuming that you're doing, that you know, you turned around and you're gonna keep going down maybe out here for the mid boost. I believe that is probably what he is thinking. So he's going for the ball. Although you turn as well. And do you have boost? No, you don't have boost. So you probably shouldn't have gone for that since you didn't have boost. So don't you definitely would have been beaten there. Cuz Ben, yeah, Ben's already beaten both of you. Although Pen uh Pez got a a good 50. You're grabbing the mini pads, that's good. Grab the hundred. Bit of an awkward touch on the wall and then you go to get another one, but then oh yeah, it looks like you realize Pez Pez is going for it as well. I don't think Pez should have gone for that. He should have waited for you to make the touch. Although I don't think you ended up getting one. Yeah, he ended up hitting it anyways, but he should have waited for you to make a touch. Good aggression. And good shot. Let's go back to that and watch that from Pez again. It's a bit slow to the air. If he did a, a double jump and start boosting, he may have had the touch. And if you don't know how to do a double jump aerial, I know you said that you're champ one. If you don't know how to do it, I can always show you. But uh, yeah, if he did a double jump, that would have he would have had a much better shot at touching that. And then the other team also made the mistake of both going for that when probably neither of them should have gone for that. One of them should have at least gone back towards the net. Like uh, it looks like Benja Pike could have just gone to net while V-Rush goes up for the ball. But it resulted in a goal. They, they ended up double committing and that gave you plenty of time to put that into the net. It was a good shot too. Coming at it from that angle can be a bit tough. But you got it in. On kickoff you could probably flip into the into the boost here just for extra speed like flip like right here just to increase your speed I'd also leave that mid boost for Pez because I believe he is probably needing boost now after that kickoff so if he had if he has that mid boost he'd be able to be a bit more comfortable upfield. But it looks like he's doing okay. I'll swap back to you. But generally, it's nice to leave the mid boost for the one that goes for kickoff. Like, if you see they're on the left side as well, you can just leave it for them, especially since you've got 88 boost right now. You don't really need the 100 pad. Uh, I probably would have rushed that you probably could have taken it up the wall or at least 50 it with uh, rush yeah, that kind of created a little bit of awkwardness but you got the 50 off it was a good uh, it was a good job for going for a bump I love going for bumps and demos when they least expect it and that was a really good moment to do it 
Unfortunately, you missed, which it looks like it leads to a goal. Yeah. I just want to see what Pez does. Oh, he misses that too. Yeah, I think if he had a 50 there, it might not have gone back. Uh, ben Jeff, I would have won that 50 anyways. But Pez should have hit that. And then, yeah, it ends up being a goal. Flip right there might not have been the right call. Because you're out of boost. And you see Benja just collected a, a, another boost pad while also boosting towards the ball. So he's definitely going to beat you to that boost pad. So the best thing to do here would be, you see that he's boosting at that really fast. So he's definitely going to beat you to both the ball and the boost. Might have been able to, from here, you probably notice that about around here, and then grab that boost pad, the minis, and take it kind of back that way. Although for this play in particular, it didn't really matter because I believe Pez, yeah, Pez was a bit close. He should have been ready for that and should have been able to save that. Because Pez is right here. And he's not really able to cover much of the defense. He's already jumped. And the ball is still kind of far away. And he gets beat. So if I were Pez, I would have been a bit more back here. You, you probably hear the term uh, back post defense or far post defense, rear post defense. It's all kind of like being ready at the the far away post so you have better coverage of the goal. Uh, let me see what it looked like for him. So it kind of looks a little lost. So I can't, that's not, that one's not really on you. He didn't, it doesn't look like he collected any boost pads after those first two. Yeah, he misses all the boost pads and misses that. So that's not your fault at all. Again, you could have flipped into the that boost pad right here. So you flip and then you get that boost. And by the time you've landed, you'll be able to start turning out just like that. Uh, here with your boost, I would have been way closer. Like you... Let me, look, let me go back to this. So right here, you can see Pezman's going to beat him just by how close he is to the ball compared to Rush. I would start boosting towards this or maybe even toggle your ball cam while doing that so you can look around and see that you know Benja is all the way over there so he's nowhere near the net. Let me get back to player review. Yeah, if you were closer on that, that probably could have been a goal. Although it, looked, it seems like Benji was there pretty quick. Yeah. But I would have been, after getting that boost, I would have been boosting and also flipping, getting yourself to supersonic to get up there. Yeah, Benja did swoop in pretty quick. And he gets the wall hit. Good job for not just throwing yourself at that. A lot of people would. Would just, you know, try to win the uh, win the ball over and flip, like turn around towards Ben and flip, hoping to get the ball. It was a good job that you recognized that you were not going to beat him to the ball and that you just fell back. That was an okay touch. 
It was good. It was good thing that Rush wasn't there, or else that probably would have been another goal. But here, instead of flipping into it like that, you could try catching the ball. So then you would have you maintain possession of it, and then you could just start taking it up field from there. But yeah, Rush wasn't there, and Pez was able to swoop in pretty quickly and get that. He got a bit of a, a weak hit there. Those are what, like, what I like to call wet noodle hits. Okay, yeah, here, let's kind of see. Here I would have toggled your ball cam again, just for like a quick moment to see where Benja is. So if we actually detach off of you, Benja's facing the other way. That might be hard to tell from uh, your perspective. Because you're, most people are watching, you know, what's happening right there. You know, you're watching the ball, watching Pez, watching Rush go up for that. You're trying to, you know, read the, read the ball correctly. Yeah, and Benja didn't turn for that. So if you had turned your uh, ball cam off real, real quick and just recognized that Benja was falling back, you would have been able to realize that, oh, I don't need to immediately jump at this and try to bat the ball away. You could have uh, caught the car, not caught the car, caught the ball on your car and maybe dribble it up forward for a little bit. Yeah, Pez is kind of out of the play after making that hit. He probably doesn't have any boost after that. He's got some, but not a, not much to really do anything with. So he's already out. So we'll go back to your perspective. So we get the wet noodle hit. Not really getting any of the boost pads. Uh, here... So when you turn... I think initially what I would have done is go for the, the smaller pads. Because it keeps you closer in the play while also, you know, getting your boost pads. So let's see this again. So you've landed here. I would have immediately have started turning and followed this trail of boost pads while also watching the ball. So if you're following that trail of boost pads, probably up to here with what ends up happening, because the ball ends up going back to your side of the field. So you don't get any boost here. Then you start going for the corner, but you only pick up the one. Although you did have plenty of time to actually grab your corner boost, the, the corner 100 that's actually behind you. And then you push up too fast. So right here, I would have waited. This is where the back post defense comes in handy. Instead of rushing at the ball right here, I'd position yourself about right here. Just kind of watching what's gonna happen. Because right now, he's just dribbling it. And Benja also could make a pass play. But he goes for the flick instead. I think he recognizes that you're rushing him. So he just flicks it over you. Let me watch Rush. Not Rush, Ben. Oh, he actually doesn't really see you at all. Ah, he kind of sees you for a glimpse there. Within that moment, he's probably expecting you to push. And even even we'll go the, on the uh, the flip side. If he didn't see you and just went for a blind flick, if you were positioned on the the back post, you would have been able to save that. Man, I really don't know how to spectate. Oh my goodness, I'm going to the wrong people. But yeah, if you. 
so let's say you collected the 100 pad that's behind you and then you position yourself in the net and waited for him if he did his blind flick let's now move over here so if you're right here that's kind of that's a pretty easy save you know the ball's not moving very fast it's not very high it's not really an awkward spot if you're right here you just kind of drive up to it and you know bat it away that's just something to keep in mind when when you're on defense the back post is your friend so it lets you have a wider coverage of the net And here, again, this is C, and then it happens to you, like with the other moment where you stole his 100 pad. Obviously, this isn't like revenge, but this is more of him not knowing either that leaving that boost pad is usually the best thing to do. Let me see what his boost situation is. So he's got, okay, he burns a lot right there. He definitely didn't need to burn a lot there. He made himself need more boost because if he looked over to the right, you can see that there is no blue player near this ball. But instead he rushes over to it to uh, make sure that he's the one that gets the ball. And it kind of then in turn puts you at a position because now exactly like you did, you need to go back and get boost. Which then, you know, puts puts Pez in a 1v2. He kind of did that to himself. That was a good shot, though. a little light if you had hit that with more I guess I don't know I'm trying to think of the, the right words here Pez was actually ready for a pass but regardless it was good it was a good shot although it did get taken away although what ended up happening is that they ended up double committing again this was probably not player view on fly oh my goodness you can tell I don't expect they very often this was definitely Benja's Let me watch this from uh, Rush. Eh, Rush could have had that. Yeah, he ended up having it, but got batted away. Yeah, that was Rush's ball. Ben should have waited. Yeah, Ben ends up uh, taking Rush out of the play. It was good patience, too. Just waiting for the ball to fall back down. You just kind of slap it towards the, the net. And then Pez was able to finish. Unless it gave you the goal. I didn't really see what happened. Here again... With these kickoffs, I would say forget. Forget this boost pad here. And just go straight for the 100. And then as I had said before, you can flip into that 100 pad. Good shadow defense. That was really good. He was waiting for you to attack there. And then he ends up 
messing up because he wasn't prepared to have to dribble the ball a bit farther. That was pretty lucky. They should have scored there. I'm not sure what Rush was doing there. Yeah. Rush uh, definitely ruined their chances of scoring again. Wait. Yeah, because Benja, ha Benja has the ball. 100%. And then Rush is trying to get involved when he really shouldn't be. So Benja ends up bumping Rush... And as a result of that, it throws Ben off. So he hits it up. He's more of watching the ball than he is Rush. Let's switch over to Rush here. So yeah, Rush is trying to just... You know, he, he has his eyes fully on the ball there. He's not paying attention that, you know... He's not taking into consideration that Ben is right there facing the direction of the ball while he is facing in a complete opposite direction so he gets bumped and then Benja is unable to uh, score that because you see he goes, he's thrown off Rush is now thrown off and he flips you were able to be there but at the same time Rush kind of blocked that as well so it's good hustle back to the net but that probably should have been a goal for them. But it was a mixture of both you being back on time and Rush kind of messing that up. Here it looks like he hesitated a little bit. Yeah, right there. Since you don't have any boost, I'd just drop back. Like right here, just fall back and get that 100 pad to your left. It's a bit of a slow aerial. I would have double jumped off the wall and attacked this if you planned on attacking it. Or at the same time, I would have just fallen back to the net I just keep going up the wall and maybe uh, just be on the backboard something like that but if you plan on attacking a ball like that double jumping off the wall would be preferred just gives you that extra speed and momentum towards the ball like you might actually if you had double jump towards that and maintain that direction which looks like at the end you kind of turned away you might have actually been able to get a 50 off there if you did the double jump start boosting towards the ball you might have actually been able to get a 50 there but that's all right so pez gets a not not a great clear he just like kind of slams it against the wall And then you slam against the wall as well. Good clear out. Oh, that's rough. I've done that too many times. But yeah, Benjo was definitely in a poorly positioned spot. But it looks like you just got a bad touch off of it. It looks like you just did your flip a little late, it seems like. That little wiggle there might have been... Looks like it was a little bit of hesitation whether if you should have gone for the ball or not. Which you definitely should have. That little wiggle there kind of messed you up. Because Benja, it looks like Benja could have gone for the ball, but he was... He also pushed on the brakes. 
in preparation for a shot. But it looks like you got into your own head there, and it resulted in a, a weaker shot than intended. But that would have been a, that probably would have been a goal as well. Because if you had positioned yourself a bit better there, if you kept going towards the ball and then hitting it just a little high, which it looks like you got you got the height, but you didn't weren't able to get the power or the direction just because of that slight wiggle. Yeah, right here. Redo that little. It looks like you move your moved yourself left and right really fast a couple times. That right there. So usually, when it comes to hesitation, if you hesitate, your odds are you're not going to hit it or do what you are planning on doing. My word of advice would be, if you're going to do something, do it. And if you're not going to do something, don't do it. Because not only does it mess you up, it'll mess up your teammates as well. Let me just see what Pez is doing. See, it didn't affect him very bad, but there was potential for a goal right there. Oh no, no. This is one of those moments where you sort of panic. I find myself doing this kind of a lot as well. Oh, and you swing really wide there. Yeah, that was super wide. Yeah, here. After you see that. Instead of flipping, you know, jumping up and hitting that. Just catch it. Because it kind of, it kind it's something that can get in your head too, you know, like oh, you have the entire field open, and then you miss anyways. Don't feel bad. Everyone does this, no matter what rank you are. But it's just one of those things where it's kind of you gotta know when to take it slow, you know, because after that, Benja's in the air. Rush is, you know, kind of far back. Although he is coming, I would have at least your first initial touch catch the ball on the front of your car, and then then you can start boosting and start dribbling it towards the net. And then you and then right here, when you go to swing to correct yourself, you swing super wide. Right here, I would have started turning the other direction right here. And because you see it's still open. There's no one on there's no one from the other team defending. And then let's see what happens here for Pez. And then Rush does a good job of blocking Pez from being in a position to make that shot. And it causes him to mess up. Even then I don't think Pez would have been able to get there. Rush would have demoed him before he was going to get in that position. But that was a good good play on Rush to bump Pez to force that bad touch. Oof. And right here is a bit of unfortunate timing where you turn in to be in position to be ready to hit the ball again. But you turn in just a little too early and the ball ends up being like if you were maybe right here still oh wait you ended up being I'd say a little bit before you turn like if you were still straight about right here you may have been able to correct yourself but at the same time Pez was in your way so you it's everything about this just gets super awkward 
and it kind of goes into like a panic mode. Right here after that touch. Mm. It was a good idea to go for the bump again. But you also kind of landed a bit odd. Like you're you're kind of two wheels on the ground, two wheels in the air, and it kind of messes up your position a bit. So it ruins your chances of uh, getting that bump or goal. Again, this was a good, a good attempt, although it didn't result in anything. You got really close. If you had demoed him, that would have been really good. You might have ran into the ball, but the demo would have been good. I think Pez may have been trying to pass to you. Nah, he was trying to go for a shot. Yeah, if you got that demo off, that would have been perfect. Oh, he missed the booze pad. So here it gets a little awkward. So after that, you miss all those booze pads. And then you land bad right there. Almost resulted in a goal. Oh. Oh. Oh, man. That makes me so sad to see. Oh, this is another goal that could have gone in. He was rushing it too hard. That, that was a good touch. Here, he hits it too early. If he had waited just a little bit longer to swing into the ball. Oh. It makes that touch too early. That ruins your chances of getting another goal again. You missed that boost pad as well, and that one. Did that one spawn there? Yeah, that one spawns there. So you get lucky that one spawns. It's a good 50. Oh, unlucky bounce, though. Now it seems like you guys are both in a panic to uh, hit the ball to get a goal. Although it's kind of, it gets a bit awkward, especially since you're solo queuing. It's not convenient to be able it's not easy to call someone off saying i got it or take the shot because it's since it's through text you have to look up in that corner that's just one of those awkward moments where uh it looks like he probably should have fallen back i believe that's what should have happened either that or you could have i don't know that one's tough to call, I'll be honest. Because you both get there at like pretty much the same exact time. Let me see what Pez sees. So he sees that bounce. Let me go back a bit farther. With him having all the time in the world like that, he probably should have just waited a bit farther back to be just on the off chance that a bounce like that would happen. Most of the time, that's going to either roll up or or bounce down. But it hit that perfect corner, that little pinch spot that sends it awkward. Reminds me of the, the grand finals of the uh, RLCS when Justin 
hit that zero second shot to send it out overtime. They keep to the line. Turbo pass it there. Bounces it into the corner. Energy still around. Justin is there for the shot. Justin! Justin! This is Rocket League! That's kind of exactly what happened there. I was still on Pez. So we'll go back to this moment. But yeah, there, it, that's just really awkward. And then he gets a really weak hit, if you even want to call it that. From what I gathered here just by watching that, it seems like defensive positioning is something that you should start to be a bit more aware of. Where's the one? Yeah, this one. Also, boost pad collection. So it seems like you missed a lot of the boost pads. Now, this could have just been a one-off thing of where, you know, you. it just feels like you miss all the boost pads. I have matches like that where it just feels like you're always going right past the boost pads. But being ready on defense, being in the right position, and then uh, kickoffs. So I'll actually show you what I mean by flipping into the, the kickoff. I'm going to go into training. So if I'm right here, I'm going to turn off unlimited boost. If I'm right here, I'm going for that corner boost right here. This is what I do. So you see how that's a lot quicker. It can take a little bit of getting used to, like getting the direction down, because you know sometimes you'll flip past it. But it's just something that helps you speed up your play, because then you can start boosting up. And then, I didn't pay much attention, but if you're at a spot where you need to go backwards, you can incorporate the half flip, which I saw you do a couple times for uh, just recovering on plays. Being able to half flip into the boost pad, and then you can you know, either choose to go on defense or start going on offense. Well, I missed it there, but you get the point. And uh, for the defensive positioning, I'm actually going to go to a training pack that I've created. I hope it's still here. Defensive positioning, there it is. So what this training pack is, it pretty much just shows you what good and bad defensive positioning looks like. So this is an example of bad positioning. So you see I'm at the dead center of the net, and if I want to go save that, you know, you kind of have to do really awkward if anything it's unsavable so yeah you get the point being out of position will get you scored on and this is the same exact shot but if you're more towards you know the rear post now you don't need to be this close like in my training pack but it just kind of gives you an understanding that being in this general area is much better than being in the center. Because you can see, this is this is so easy. This is a much easier save than this. And this is that same, this, a different shot where you're in a bad position. And then this is the same shot. And here's another one. You can see that since you know I'm still kind of facing the you know, I'm facing the ball, sort of, but I am in a really bad spot, so you can't really save that. Whereas if you're in a good spot, the save becomes a whole lot easier. 
same with this. So for example, if you're near post defending and you know no one else, like your, none of your teammates are behind you, can't save that. Whereas if you're far post, easiest save you'll ever make. And we'll use, you know, the same thing again, near post. And far post. Near a uh, bad position. Good position. Oh, that one still went in. <laughs> but yeah, you, you kind of see what I mean? This one's a bit awkward. Like if you try to flip forward or jump forward at that one, like most people will try to do, you're gonna get scored on. Obviously, obviously, even if you're in a bad position, you can still make a save, but it's just so much easier because compared to this, where you have to, you know, reverse, double jump, boost to hit it. Whereas with this one, double jump aerial to, you know, and it's pretty easy. You just hit it into, you know, your corner or to a teammate outfield, but uh, yeah, you're not saving this, except for I just did, but you see how much, like everything I had to do to get that save? Jump to twist and then flip. You see how awkward that is? Even if you're still able to save it, being in the right position initially will just save you so much uh, time and effort because this requires way less effort than this. Like this is just ridiculous. Whereas being on the far posts, even though I still let that go in and with that one, it makes life a whole lot easier.